All right, we're going to do another integration example to calculate a physics unit of flux of a vector field uh, through a surface, which is the upper hemisphere of radius 5. So the vector field is given here, um, x squared y comma y comma z squared. So that's provided. So we need a couple pieces of information to do this. First of all, I want you to know that we're, for this example, instead of looking at the top part of the hemisphere um, and the xy plane where it hits, you know, so here's our sphere of radius 5, and we're using the upper portion. We're going to use the divergence theorem and not a regular surface integral to evaluate this divergence divergence theorem so the divergence is a very simple calculation as you might recall but pretty weighty in terms of its concept and where it comes from so it's the first component with respect to x plus the second component with respect to y plus the third component with respect to z which will be, for this problem, 2xy plus 1 plus 2z. Pretty straightforward. The hemisphere, remember when we look at things in two dimensions, um, looking at the side or top view is helpful. So the top view is just going to be a circle of radius 5. And then the side view will also look like a circle of radius 5. And we set up our divergence theorem for flux. Flux will equal 1, 2, 3, triple integral. 2xy plus 1 plus 2z. And then if we're in rectangular coordinates, dz, dy, dx. The x boundaries uh, for this hemisphere are from negative 5 to positive 5. And the y boundaries are from negative to positive. Uh, and it's this circle. Circle has radius 5, so y is plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. That's the equation of the circle we see here. 25 minus x squared to positive square root of 25 minus x squared. And the upper half of the hemisphere means that the z starts at 0, but it goes to the square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. So this is the set up version of the integral to calculate flux by divergence theorem. We're going to set up only and not evaluate. Here's a follow-up question. What would this triple integral look like if we used spherical coordinates? What if we used spherical coordinates to measure this upper half of the hemisphere? What would this become, this 1, 2, triple integral? How would it look? May not quite fit on this screen. We'll see what happens here. Well, the upper hemisphere theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And phi, or phi, we'll have to calculate in a moment, but the radius is always up to 5 units. So let's see what we can come up with when we look at this a little bit better. The side view is going to also look like this. That would be the y-axis, and that would be the z-axis. And this angle phi is actually here. 
is 0 to pi over 2. That'll generate the upper half of the sphere. We have 2 times x times y plus 1 plus 2 times z. And then, oh, we are going to be tight on space. Remember, what goes in this section right here, I'm going to have to squeeze down here, is rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. And those are the pieces, and we have to fill them in here. We still need the uh, x and y, x and y and z components here. So x is equivalent to rho sine phi cosine theta, sine phi cosine of theta. Y is equal to rho sine phi sine of theta. And z is equal to rho cosine of phi. Now, if this were your actual homework or exam paper, you need to write this fully out horizontally and use the full width of your paper if you're much. It just doesn't quite fit on my tiny little tablet screen right now. All right, there it is. Surface integral for flux in rectangular and spherical form.